What's up, Mavs fans? Welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. Hey, I know there's no basketball going on right now. It's a really weird time that we have an NBA hiatus, but assuming we're going to get some playoff basketball in the future, I've got four X factors for the Dallas Mavericks if they want to make a deep playoff run. We're going to break them down for you right now. Let's start out with the dynamic duo. Look, this really is what makes everything happen for the Dallas Mavericks. It's Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic. Now, the two together this year have so far been averaging Luka 28.7 points per game, nine boards, nine assists, and shooting nearly 32% from three. Now, we all know that three-point percentage could be a lot better, and there have been times where it looks great and other times where it doesn't look so hot. Now, Porzingis, on the other hand, 19.2 points per game. He's finally surprised surpassed Luka in the rebounds per game category at nine and a half this year. He's averaging 2.1 block shots and shooting nearly 35% from three. If the Mavs want to make a playoff run, a deep playoff run, these two are going to have to get it together and play well together all year long. Now let's talk about Luka Doncic a little bit more, the MVP of the Mavericks season. Now he's been dealing with some weird injuries. We all know that, but truly having a MVP like season. If the Mavs were a little bit higher, maybe if they were a top four seed, I think Luka would be right up there with LeBron and Giannis in the MVP conversation. But because the Mavs aren't up there, he's not quite up there either. Now, the last 10 games for Luka, this is a little bit after returning from that injury that he dealt with. He's been averaging 27.8 points per game, nearly nine assists and eight boards, but the three-point percentage has really taken a hit at 29.3%. Now, I get it. He shoots a lot, but if the Mavs want to be better in the playoffs, his three-point shot has got to be better as well. Now let's shift focus here and go to Porzingis, who has been absolutely amazing. Going into this last stretch, he was absolutely killing it. And I love what I've seen from him. He stepped up when Luka's been hurt. And even when now that Luka's back and healthy, he's starting to look like the Kristaps Porzingis that we knew in New York. Now, again, with Porzingis, the last 10 games, he's looked really good. 23.8 points per game, 10 boards, so he's averaging a 20-point double-double. His blocked shots per game is up at 2.9, and the three-point percentage is right around the same. So everything except that three-point percentage is better than his season averages for Kristaps Porzingis. He's truly having an outstanding stretch. Now, look, individually, they've been absolutely incredible, but together... They've struggled a little bit finding that chemistry, but it's finally coming along. They're really starting to gel, and that really showed in that overtime win against the New Orleans Pelicans. When you see what they did together, I think this was their best game they played together all season long. Luka Doncic had a 30-point monster triple-double, 30 points, 17 rebounds, 10 assists. He blocked a shot, and he knocked down four three-pointers. Now, Kristaps Porzingis, on the other hand, did what you wanted him to do and really just played out of his mind on the offensive end. 34 points, 12 rebounds, three assists. He had five blocked shots. Zion Williamson, even though Maxi Kleber was guarding him a little bit more, Zion couldn't get a shot in the paint around around Kristaps and Maxi. And then he also knocked down three three-pointers in that game. So here's a big question that I think is really going to determine the future of the Dallas Mavericks. Now, look, it's not all about this year, and who knows even what ha what is going to happen to the NBA season this year. But will Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis be all-stars together next year? Type Y for yes, type N for no. If Porzingis is putting up the numbers that he's been putting up in the past 10 games all of next season, I think it's an easy yes for me. Now, while you guys vote on this, go ahead and watch this quick YouTube ad break. Now let's get into my next X Factor for the Mavs, Tim Hardaway Jr. The dude has been playing lights out. I love talking about him on this show because he truly is the biggest surprise of the season for me. He was, ever, what everyone thought, a throw-in in the Chris Alps Porzingis deal, and now he is a true third option for the Dallas Mavericks. This year, Tim Hardaway Jr. is averaging 15.8 points per game, two assists and three boards, but 40.7% from three is the most impressive thing that Tim Hardaway Jr. has done all season long. And if the Mavs want to make that deep playoff push, He's going to have to do that in the playoffs in the postseason as well. When you look at what he's done month by month, the averages have continued to climb. We've talked about this before, but now that we've seen a little bit more of him in March, let's talk about it again. In October, he was averaging nine points per game. Now, he was coming off the bench, and there weren't that many games being played in October, but nine points per game, not good. Everyone was already talking about, hey, let's go ahead and trade Tim Hardaway Jr. Then November rolls around. All of a sudden, he's in the starting lineup, and he can't miss. He's averaging 14 points per game. December comes around, he stays consistent, 14.7. Then he ups it even a little bit more into the new year at 15.2 points per game. Then you get into February, another 15.2 point per game average. But March, and I know March was cut short because of everything going on right now in the NBA, but in March, Tim Hardaway Jr. averaged 21.2 points per game. Now, I don't expect him to average 21 points per game in the playoffs. In fact, I think it might be bad for the Mavs if he's averaging 21 points per game because that's taking a lot of shots away from Luka and KP. 
but if he can keep that around the 15 to 18 point per game mark on a regular basis and shoot 40 percent from three the Mavs are looking pretty solid now my favorite graphic that I've ever pulled up on here 453 point attempts and 40 percent from three there are only four guys that have been doing that this year Duncan Robinson of the Miami Heat shooting 45 percent from three look this dude Came out of absolutely nowhere, and he's killing it. I do love watching him play. If you want to teach your kids how to shoot a basketball, show them videos of Duncan Robinson. Davis Bertans at 42.4% for the Washington Wizards. A guy that I would love on the Dallas Mavericks at some point. I just don't think it's going to happen. Boyan Bogdanovich at 41.4%. And then you see it right there, Tim Hardaway Jr. He's taking a ton of threes this year, but he's making a ton of threes this year at 40.7% from three. Now, Mavs fans, Tim Hardaway Jr., third option on the team. I get that. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to rank your three favorite Mavericks on the team this year. Don't tell me the three best. I think the three best are pretty obvious in Tim Hardaway Jr., KP, and Luka. But I want your three favorites. For me, it's Luka and KP, the duo. And then Dorian Finney-Smith is my other one. And that's actually who we're about to talk about. But right now, I want to get into Maxi Kleba. So stay tuned for Dorian Finney-Smith. Let's talk about the Wurzburg wall, Maxi Kleba, who's really just been an incredible defensive presence for the Dallas Mavericks. I mean, he comes in, now that Dwight Powell is down, he's getting more minutes at that five position and even at the stretch four a little bit as well. Maxi Kleber blocking shots and shooting the ball well this year. He's averaging 9.2 points per game, 5.4 boards, 1.2 block shots, and shooting 37.4% from three. But the reason I have him as an X factor for the Mavs if they want to make a playoff push is the fact that his three-point shot has taken a little bit of a hit since the All-Star break, and I'm a little bit worried about it. Because if Maxi Kleba can't stretch the floor, that really doesn't bode well for the Mavs on offense because they need all five guys to be able to make a three-pointer on a consistent basis. Now, look at his numbers before and after All-Star break. Before the All-Star break, he was averaging 8.9 points per game, 5.2 boards, an assist, 1.1 blocks, and nearly 38% from three. Now, let's also remember, before the All-Star break also includes minutes in which Dwight Powell was playing, Dwight Powell was starting and getting more of those five minutes. Now, after the All-Star break, he's scoring more, he's pulling down more boards, he's blocking more shots. That's great. He's even actually dishing out more assists. But the thing he's not doing as well is shooting the three ball at 35.6%. It's not bad. In fact, I think it's better than a lot of people would have expected from Maxi Kleba. But it's not 38%. It needs to go up, and the Mavs have to have him consistently making threes if they want to be a true playoff threat. Because when you've got guys on the floor with Maxi Kleba, Kristaps Porzingis, Luka Doncic, Dorian Finney-Smith, and Tim Hardaway Jr., that's five guys that at any time can make a three-pointer from just about anywhere on the floor. So he's got to be a reliable three-point shooter if the Mavs want to be a playoff threat, a true playoff team in the Western Conference. Now, here's the question I have with Maxi Kleba. Who do you think should be the primary backup center? We know Kristaps Porzingis is starting at the five now that Dwight Powell is gone, but who should be the true backup five? Should it be Willie Cauley-Stein, Boban Marjanovic, or Maxi Kleba? Now, I know Maxi's definitely the best player in this rotation right here, but I think Maxi could play some more four, and maybe you shift Boban into the true backup five, especially after that game he had against Denver. Now, I know Boban minutes are very situational. Nikola Jokic is a great matchup for him, but... Boban kind of proved himself, and I would like to see some more Boban minutes, but I'd also like to see some more Willie Cauley-Stein minutes, so let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Now let's talk about Dorian Finney-Smith. I already talked about him. He's my third favorite Maverick on this team. I've been pulling hard for him since they picked him up undrafted out of Florida, and now he's truly proving himself to be one of the best 3 and D players, not on the team, not on the team, in the league. I mean, he is an elite wing defender, and he's becoming a true, really a great shooter from the corner, and even at the top of the key sometimes as well. Dorian Finney-Smith this year is averaging 9.3 points per game, 5.5 boards, 1.5 assists, and 37.4% from three. Now, I tweeted out from my Twitter account, which you can follow me at all underscore things underscore Mavs, that when you look at guys that are 6'7 or shorter that are only averaging so many offensive rebounds, Dorian Finney-Smith is one of the top three offensive rebounders for guys his size. Truly incredible what he's been doing this year on the boards and on the offensive end, but especially especially on the defensive end. And the reason that's so important is because some of the Western Conference wings that the Mavs might have to face in the playoffs are some of the best players in the world. LeBron James of the Los Angeles Lakers. If the Mavs go up against the Lakers at any time, Dorian Finney-Smith's going to be the one guarding LeBron James. Kawhi Leonard on the Clippers, as, as well as, excuse me, Paul George on the Clippers. So Dorian's going to guard one of them. I would put Dorian on Kawhi Leonard. I'm more worried about him than Paul George, who hasn't had that great of a season this year. Maybe stick... Kid Gilchrist or Tim Hardaway Jr. on Paul George, that's a matchup nightmare, honestly, for the Mavs. But look, Dorian's going to have to guard one of them all playoff series long. 
James Harden of the Houston Rockets. More of a guard, but Dorian can guard, or switch on to guards. And I think James Harden is one of those that he would have to defend no matter what. As well as Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz. Assuming he comes back healthy, if he's in the playoffs, I expect Dorian Finney-Smith to guard Donovan Mitchell in a matchup with the Jazz. Now let's look at the lineup, the starting five for the Mavs right now. Obviously, like I said, Dwight Powell is out. So here's what the Mavs have been rolling with. Luka Doncic, Seth Curry in the backcourt. Tim Hardaway Jr., Dorian Finney-Smith, and Kristaps Porzingis. Now, I don't know the stats on this, but that's got to be one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. Starting fives, when you got Seth Curry and Tim Hardaway Jr., along with Dorian Finney-Smith, and then this, the percentages don't say it, but Porzingis and Luka as three-point shooters are true threats as well. I love this lineup. I'm excited to see what this team can do in the playoffs. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that we actually get to see a playoff run from the Dallas Mavericks. So here's how we're going to end today's show, Mavs fans. You've stuck around to the very end, so I want you to answer this question if you are watching right now. Which team do you least want to play in the first round of the NBA playoffs? Look, for me, as a Mavs fan, I'm saying the Clippers. I don't like the idea of having to guard Paul George and Kawhi. I'd rather play the Lakers. I think the Mavs played the Lakers better than they've played the Clippers. Obviously, I'd rather see neither of them. But who would you least want to see in the first round of the playoffs as a Dallas Mavericks fan?